Britain returned to gold in 1925. The gold standard, like the exchange rate mechanism, ensures stable exchanges and economic subject. Why, so, was at that place so many unfavorable judgment of the return to gold in 1925? In March 1919, the big trade shortage and low degree of gold militias resulted in formal forsaking of the gold base by the UK. On April 28, 1925, Churchill announced in his budget address that there would be an immediate return to gold at pre-1913 para. Read away, Lloyd's Bank Review, 1970 expresses in his article that returning to gold at $4.76 was a failure of the commission that they had non-done adequate research and had non-hold adequate consideration and expression at other states apart from the U.S. The commission failed to take history of monetary values in any external state apart from USA and besides used the incorrect indices, sweeping monetary value, for their computation and therefore derived the incorrect consequence. The policy proclamation in 1919 of the purpose of returning to pre-1913 gold criterion was tantamount to the proclamation of a contractionary pecuniary policy. Under flexible ER government of 1919 to 1925 contractionary pecuniary policy is expected to ensue in an appreciating of nominal ER, deflate the monetary value degree given higher rate of rising prices after the First World War, and bettering fight. However, because the ER is determined in and plus market that adjust comparatively rapidly, we would anticipate to detect and grasp of the existent ER in the short term whereby the ER deviates from the PPP equilibrium. Harmonizing to gains? The economic consequences of Mr. Churchill when UK returns to gold in 1925, sterling was 10% overvalued. To find the magnitude of overestimate Keynes used buying power para theory, PPP, which province that flexible exchange rate reflects motions in comparative monetary values between states. Matthews argue that exchange rate was non-overvalued and exchange rate in 1925 reflected more forces of economic sciences cardinal than authorities' intercession. This is due to the usage of supply-side theory of exchange rate. High replacing ratio as an index, ensuing from generous benefit system, increases search unemployment, coercing employers to offer up existent rewards to pull workers away from leisure. The exchange rate merely reflected the accommodation to supply-side dazes in the UK labour market, therefore no overestimate. To better UK fight, there need to be more flexibleness in the labour market. However, it is non-clear that the replacing ratio had big impact on UK pay costs or unemployment. More research needs to be undertaken on these supply-side influences. Redmond, 1984 presents a figure of comparings which suggest that PPP computations for the dollar and the pound in 1925 relation to 1913 scope from an undervaluation of 4% to an overestimate of 17%, depending on which type of monetary value index is used for comparing. Keynes Consequence of a 10% overestimate is a particular result of the specific retail monetary value indices he used. Redmond suggests a more representative index of fight is the existent many-sided exchange rate, which measures both nominal exchange rate fluctuations and comparative monetary value motions for a broad sample of UK trading spouses. The tabular array below shows the consequence that the UK exchange rate was overvalued in 1925 by between 5 and 20%. Merely the magnitude depends on the type of monetary value index used. Multilateral existent effectual ER for the pound, 1924-30-1913 equals 100. Deflating by sweeping prices deflating by retail monetary values. 192495.283.4 192594.879.6 192692.073.8 192797.381.5 192898.581.9
1930103.5872 Beginning, Redmond, 1984 However, we have to hold in head that a figure of UK trading spouses were none on gold during this period. Furthermore, existent exchange rate within gilded state might hold varied as a consequence of differential monetary value and productiveness motions across states. Furthermore, Solomu and Katow, 1994, show that 1913 represents a low point on the degree of the existent effectual exchange rate during the period 1870 to 1913. Does overestimate a fair? Increase in greatest monetary value of export means a decrease in our fight. Icon Green, 1986 and 1992, surveys a cross-section of 12 states during 1921 to 1927 including UK and found that there is extended grounds of overestimate in the UK, Germany and Norway. This is shown by the degree of fight as measured by the existent ER. In the instance of the UK, given the inauspicious effects of the First World War, in footings of a loss of markets, it would look reasonable to reason that for the UK to keep international fight in the 1920s, a depreciated ER would hold been a necessary characteristic of a more successful UK cyclical recovery. Depression, nevertheless have hysteresis consequence, returning to gold at pre-1913 para make the state suffered a relentless inauspicious end product consequence in the effort to re-establish the old para. Harmonizing to Keynes, if the authorities admit that the job of overestimate is chiefly a pecuniary one and state to labor that return to gold at $4.76 is non-attack on existent rewards and can do money pay have to fall by 10% to counterbalance an addition if, by 10%, or there is an addition in productiveness, there would hold been no job. This besides means that when the accommodation is complete, the cost of populating would fall approximately 10%. He suggests two alternate ways of conveying about the decrease of money rewards. First, by apply economic force per unit area and to escalate unemployment by recognition limitation, until rewards are forced down. This will be hard since decrease in money pay means lower criterion of life if other industries don. T cut down their money pay to diminish cost of life. Furthermore, those that are subjective to decrease in money pay foremost are non-guaranteed to be compensated subsequently by lower cost of life and hence they will defy every bit long as they can. Second, this will consequence a unvarying decrease of rewards, by understanding. Our export industries are enduring because they are the first to be asked to accept the 10% decrease of their money pay. The tight pecuniary conditions of 1925-31 were a effective force per unit area on the exchanges that showed itself by an exchange rate that was often below par. There was an inauspicious consequence on current history, but this is not the chief factor that creates force per unit area on exchange place. Fiscal establishments at place and abroad were what mattered, as current history was hard to see clearly. In 1914, Overseas-owned London sedimentations and measures were matched by the sum of short-term debts. The fact Britain was none in the place of borrowing short to impart long was due to the ability of the Bank of England to support the place of London with comparatively low gold modesty. By the mid-20s, London was no longer the natural home ground of the balances associates with such a big proportion of trade. Yet, S balance sheet place had deteriorated so that the short run debts of aliens were merely half of the short run assets of abroad holders in London. M and G T X. The export of capital exceeds the positive excess that on the balance of payments current history and had to be financed by attractive force of the short run finances. Wright says in his article that the alteration in peril led to an inchoate export of capital even without bad effects because of the addition in monetary value. However, the disequilibrium should set, greatest monetary value of British capital should fall taking to a autumn in measure subsequently. Although there is no relevant information for this, he says, 
the consequence via monetary values of the comparative attraction of existent assets in Britain and overseas can non be ignored peculiarly in relation to U.S. portions. Wright concluded that there were some inauspicious effects due to the overestimate. The failing of pound was a effect of a alteration in the balance sheet of London and of capital escape. How far it was aggravated by the effects of grasp on current history was less clear. Despite the seemingly high degree of unemployment there was a growing in the figure of individuals employed of 1.25 meters between 1925 and 1929. Growth of GNP in the same period, 12.5%, was non-negligible by British criterions. However, it was clearly lower so in the USA and several other states. The events of the mid-20s may non look so evidently to be the consequence of one ingredient in the economic policy of that period. It was the structural job that seemed to co-occur with the impairment of the chief industries. Indecision, there was decidedly an overestimate when the British returned to gold and there were relentless inauspicious effects due to this. The inauspicious consequence, nevertheless, can non be blamed on overestimate entirely, but besides on structural jobs of the chief industries, short-termism of fiscal establishments, low productiveness and pay rigidness, there does non be a successful function theoretical account that UK should follow. Neither big depreciation, taking to higher rising prices, nor returning to the pre-1913 paras were appropriate responses.